Hey, welcome back. This is part four of SCA.training Roasting Foundation course. And uh, last time we were talking about the roast process, the roast curves and graph. And so uh, finally, ending your roast well. And uh, this also includes kind of some of the requirements for your practical exam. Uh, what are some of the key variables that you should know and understand, be able to calculate? Okay, so different different items will be included, and there's uh, always language that goes along. We already talked about ROR, or rate of rise, but another term that you'll hear is development time. So development time is the time from first crack starting to the end of the roast. Some people will, uh, you know, classify this as sugar development, and that's why they call it development time. Um, but it's a very important time, and that's where a lot of the sweetness and flavors and aromas are really highlighted. So um, for example, if your roast was 11 and a half minutes and uh, your first crack started at seven minutes, okay, so you just take 11 and a half minus seven and you'd have a four and a half minute development time. You should be able to calculate something like that on your practical and your written exam if you're asked what uh, to calculate a development time. All right, so then there's a temperature midway point uh, temperature midway point, what's that? We have turning points, temperature midway points, um, various uh, temperatures that we're recording all along the process. But this would be an average temperature from the start of first crack to the end. Okay, so this is similar to development time. And why would we try to find an average temperature? Uh, just kind of to understand where we are in that process. Because development time is very important. Um, we also want to know how quickly we're proceeding through that or if we're on track. So the roaster's job is constantly to evaluate is the speed I'm progressing at in this roast accurate for my target end or target roast profile. So let's say our first crack started at 195 Celsius and it ended at 219 Celsius. Um, so we would add 195 plus 219 and then divide by 2 and the average of those two temperatures is 207 degrees Celsius or rather a midway point. So another thing that uh, is critically important is uh, safety and closing checklist. So on the right here you'll see a roast form and you should be provided this by your instructor. You can also find these online but um, there's every roaster whether it comes from the manufacturer or it's your specific roastery operations should have a safety uh, checklist and a closing checklist, an operational checklist. Okay, so critical elements, of course, you always want to make sure you turn off the gas. You want to allow your roaster to cool properly. That drum is cylindrical, and as it's rotating and cooling, it can hold that cylindrical shape. But, you know, if, if you've ever seen a candle left out in the sun, um, you know, it will warp, and it is no longer perfectly round. Uh, in the same way, hot, hot metal, when allowed to suddenly stop and sit, the pressure, uh, just from the gravitational pull, and can warp that round, nice round drum. Uh, then there's uh, chaff that develops in the roaster or in the afterburner, wherever the chaff collector is, you want to make sure you empty that. Your cleaning surfaces, your cleaning where airflow should, um, should pass. There may be uh, beans that kind of get lodged in various parts of the drum or the uh, where mechanisms rotate. So there's always cleaning and safety checklists, and these will help you prevent fires. Right? These will um, fires are very serious, and fires can occur inside and outside of the drum, on or around the roaster. So some of the things we need to look for during and after the roast, likely places fire might occur, would be gas lines. We want to make sure they're free of obstruction. They're not being run over or, you know, heavy objects aren't on them. Uh, they're not being pulled. They're not overly tight, right? They're not uh, in direct sunlight as well as being uh, close to electrical equipment. Where is the electrical equipment and is it able to cool itself and breathe properly? Electrical equipment gets hot as well. Um, you want to make sure the inside of the drum is uh, maintained or ensured that it's cleaned and uh, you also want to check inside the afterburner. Chaff can really develop 
I've seen before where roasters uh, forget to empty the chaff collector and maybe they'll roast different types of beans or at different roast levels. And uh, that buildup can reduce airflow, it can increase heat, uh, it can become flammable. So what's required to start and maintain a fire? All we need is oxygen, some kind of organic material, right? That could be coffee, that could be chaff, that could be plastic lines, um, and then we need heat. Okay, so we always, when we're roasting coffee, we're always in the presence of heat. There's almost always oxygen in the room. There better be oxygen in the room. And there's always some kind of organic material, even the oils that accumulate and develop and then the chaff that sticks to those oils after time. So oxygen, organic material, and heat, we can get a fire. Now there are different fire classifications as well. Again, we're um, introducing some of the basic concepts, but uh, these will be uh, addressed even more in the advanced and professional levels. So we have ordinary items, um, wood, paper, plastic, uh, then that would be a fire classification A. Then there is a fire classification B, such as flammable liquids, all right? And then classification C, electrical equipment. Now the reason we have different classifications is that you treat a class A fire differently than class B or C, right? So if wood is on fire or paper is on fire, you can throw some water on it. Well, if you've got a flaming, flammable liquid fire and you throw water on it, what's going to happen? Well, that's just going to spread it. It's going to disperse it and it may actually make things worse. And so um, understanding how to respond and how different fires are classified, again, this is something that needs to be dealt with locally, uh, is critical. And then electrical equipment, okay, so we respond in different ways, um, whether we open and provide exposure to cooling or whether opening a door and providing exposure to a fresh blast of oxygen could actually be a bad thing. Um, I've, seen, I've seen fires that did start in the drum and then when that bean hopper or the, uh, the escape door was opened, then a rush of oxygen came in. It was like there was this vacuum built up with a fire in the back and it can actually cause kind of a sudden burst of flame because of the introduction of oxygen. So uh, it's good to, you know, it's good to end on pretty serious note. We mentioned before that the roaster's job is serious and um, fire is something that we want to be informed about. Not afraid of, but intelligently informed and respectful of. All right, so congratulations. That's the end of our content for the foundation course. Now, after you review and you prepare, I'm sure you'll have no problem getting started and getting certified with your class. At the foundation level, at least 60% is required to pass written and practical exams. And often with the practical exams, we're really shooting for 100%. You should be able to perform all of the skills, especially at the foundation level. And uh, your, your instructor or coach, whatever class you're going through, I'm sure you'll have great help and support. Now the roasting written exam has 25 questions, so it's a bit longer than the green. If you recently watched the green, you knew it was only 15. And answering 60% of them correct within 45 minutes, multiple choice, short answers, fill in the blank, pretty standard procedure. No talking or use of notes, no cheating. <laughs> now, uh, if you want to find more ways to share or plug in, uh, depending on if you're in China or a place where WeChat and Yoku is commonly used, there's QR codes. You can scan those in right there. And then uh, you can find more great resources at sca.training. And um, there's a YouTube channel, SCA Coffee English. So you can search there and you can find the various uh, videos. We've now got green roasting and barista uploaded in video content. All of these, including introduction, are available in audio form on the website. So keep up the great work and look forward to seeing you next time, or as we say in Chinese, Jiao, Zai Jin.